Starting off our list today, we have the Catawba Killer Hole. Doesn't that sound inviting? The cave, which is located in Virginia, has been the subject of many local legends since its discovery. It has been said that a farmer killed a traveler back in the early 1900s and dumped his body into the 230 foot deep hole to avoid having his crime discovered. Another story tells of a young couple whose families disapproved of their love, much like Romeo and Juliet. While those three deaths were never proven, this next one was. In 1958, a man named David Spencer entered into the hole. He was about 25 feet down into his ascent when all of a sudden his rope snapped and he fell to the bottom of the cave where he died hopefully on impact. When his body was discovered, investigators found that cleaning fluid had come in contact with the rope used in the descent, causing its fibers to weaken and eventually break. While the death was determined to be an accident, it's really impossible to be sure. The cave is now off limits to the general public due to its dangerous nature and incredibly dark history, but as we know, a keep out sign doesn't have much effect on urban explorers of the 21st century, but maybe a warning from the top 10 family might, don't go in there or else. Kidum Cave in Kenya is known as not just one of the most dangerous caves in the world, but one of the most dangerous places in general. The cave has always been a frequent hotspot for animals. The cave's walls are full of salt, so antelope and elephants have been licking up the place for years. Now that's cute and all, but for humans, this cave is an absolute death trap, and that's because it's believed the cave is full of African fruit bats, which carry a deadly virus called Marburg. The virus has an 88% chance of causing death, affecting the cardiovascular system. It's part of the same family as the virus that causes Ebola. There have only been two known deaths in the cave, but that's because the place is completely off limits now. In 1980, a man from France visited the cave and died of the virus. A boy also died in 1987 of the same virus after having gone to the cave. Now, the United States Army Medical Research Institute of Infectious Disease carried out an investigation in the cave after these deaths, trying to figure out exactly what species was carrying the virus, but they didn't find any species carrying the Marburg disease causing virus. They believe it's from fruit bats because African fruit bats in other mines and caves throughout Africa have been known to carry it, but they're still not 100% certain. Point is, it's not a cave you're going to want to add to your spelunking list. Next up, we've got the Mosedale Cavern, home to the Mosedale Cavern disaster that took place back in 1967. That year, a man named John Ogden, along with five of his friends, made their way two miles deep into an unmapped area of the caves. While exploring in the darkness, they had no idea of what was about to happen. It started raining innocent enough, but then it started raining hard, and the water in the lake where the entrance of the cave was located began to rise, and rise, and rise. While crawling through the tunnels of the cave, the group of six began to hear the sound of water rushing up behind them, blocking their path of escape. They quickly stood up, but it didn't take long for the water to reach their necks. Above them was a small crack in the rocks, and so John Ogden decided to climb up into the crevice in the hopes that it would save his life. John watched from above, stuffed in the high crack of the cave as the water level rose above the heads of his friends, and they drowned. He was now alone, trapped inside the cave with no way of escape. It was days before anyone could get to him, but by then, he was dead, and his body was still crammed into the small crack of the cave. This next cave is basically the cave from the descent, Dark Star Cave in Uzbekistan. This cave is incredibly deep and very large. It's a gigantic underground maze reaching 3,000 feet below the ground. Not hard to spot the danger here. For one, it's incredibly dark down there. Even for a cave, light just doesn't reach the lower levels. Now, obviously, when you explore caves, you have flashlights with you, but it's also a total labyrinth down there, easy to get lost even with light. So if you get turned around and your flashlight runs out of batteries, good luck finding your way out. Not to mention that there's no cell service to be had that deep down. Navigation equipment doesn't even work as well. Only very experienced cave divers should ever attempt to explore places like this. Now I don't think there are pale cave dwelling golem monsters like the descent down there, but I wouldn't be surprised if there were. 
Next up, the Killing Cave of Phnom Sampao, located in Cambodia. Why is it called the Killing Cave? Well, in the 1970s, the cave was used as a torment and killing chamber by the Communist Party of Kampuchea. Those who died in the cave remained in the cave, their bones and ripped clothes scattered along the floors. Individuals would be thrown from the top entrance of the cave down to its depths, and the lucky ones would die on impact. The survivors would sit in agony, anxiously awaiting the release of death. Eventually, the pile of bodies got so high that falls became softer and the treacherous wait became more and more frequent. Could you imagine just waiting to die sitting on top of a pile of corpses with absolutely no way of escape? Today, the caves, still covered in the bones of the deceased, are open to tourists, but considering its dark history and all of the lost souls who died there and probably never left, I don't think I would personally recommend this one. But that's just me. Naika Mine, also known as the Cave of Crystals in Mexico, is a pretty spectacular looking place, but it's probably best just to look at the breathtaking pictures and call it a day, because the place will literally take your breath away. The conditions of the cave are almost unbearable. The cave is full of massive gypsum crystals. It looks like an alien planet or something, or like Superman's Fortress of Solitude, but it's basically the opposite of the Fortress of Solitude. It's unreasonably hot and humid in there, with temperatures reaching up to 120 degrees Fahrenheit, or about 50 degrees Celsius. On top of that, the gypsum can be very sharp. Gotta be incredibly careful where you walk. Explorers are required to also wear specialty suits filled with ice in order to fight the unbearable heat. They're also equipped with respirators to protect against the acidic pH in the air. They can only spend about 40 minutes exploring the place. Next we have the underwater cave located beneath Paganica Bay in Croatia. If you thought you had thalassophobia before, you're definitely going to have it now. In 2002, a diver was found dead at the bottom of the cave, 177 feet below the surface. He was wearing a dive suit, but no mask. Oh, and there was a 12 inch blade jammed directly into the left side of his chest. At first, authorities believed that the man had been killed, but soon they realized that what happened was something entirely different. The deceased diver, identified only as MK, had gone down into the caves alone, and while exploring, he got lost and eventually ran out of oxygen. With no oxygen left, the diver began to drown. Luckily for him, he managed to find an air pocket within the caves, but unluckily, there wasn't enough air to save him. In order to avoid the agony of a slow, painful, psychologically treacherous death, he plunged his diver's knife into his chest to avoid the drawn out process. Next up, we have Cueva de la Muerte in Costa Rica, Cave of Death. Wonder how it got that name. Probably because if you go inside it, you will die. Cave diving is always a risk. There's the chance of getting lost, stuck. Rocks could collapse. There's a whole list of potential hazards, but the cave of death is a literal death trap, and that's because the atmosphere inside of it is almost entirely carbon dioxide. There's only a small entry point into the cave that you'd have to crawl into to get in, so luckily it's not like you'll just accidentally waltz in there. Not that anyone would just be walking around and then just accidentally walk into a cave, but Animals probably do go in there and they die. If you attempt to check the cave out though, it wouldn't take long before you suffocated. There are warnings marked with skulls outside of the entrance for a very good reason. Next up, we have the Nam Talu Caves in Thailand. In 2007, Helena Carroll, her boyfriend John Cullen, and seven others entered the caves during monsoon season, despite warnings from locals who had told Helena specifically that if she were to enter the cave, she would not make it out. While exploring the depths of the caves, the group suddenly heard a loud roar, and they turned around to see water rushing towards them. Tom and Helena watched as two members of their group were swept away by the rising waters. They frantically began to climb in an attempt to avoid the rising water levels, and as they did, they saw another two members of their party get swept into the current. They managed to climb into a high crevice. It was dark, but they could still hear the rushing of the waters below. 
At some point, John decided that he had to do something. He told Helena that if they stayed where they were with no help, they would die. So he instructed her to stay put and then dove into the waters. His plan had been to swim out and find help. Helena watched as John jumped into the water and was immediately dragged into the current. Eight hours later, rescuers found her cold, wet, and terrified. When she emerged from the cave, she saw the bodies of all seven explorers along with her beloved John lying lifeless on the grass, and that's when she realized that she was the only one to make it out alive. And we finish off today with Plura Cave in Norway. This cave is only accessible through a half kilometer dive below the icy water. In 2014, the cave was deemed one of the most dangerous spots in Norway after a group of divers attempted to explore it, two of which lost their lives. The first two divers began their descent, and two hours later, with the sediment raised up after the first two had gone in, settling down now, the next three divers followed behind. But the first two divers hadn't made it to their destination. One of them got stuck in a narrow section of the cave, tangled up in a cord connected to a piece of his equipment, and he was panicking, breathing too quickly, and risking carbon dioxide poisoning. The other diver attempted to give him a cylinder of gas to reduce the carbon dioxide in his system, but while switching mouthpieces, he started swallowing in water. He died stuck between the rocks. The other divers soon arrived at the scene, and now the body was blocking their path. It was going to be tough to turn around and make their way back up to the surface because they had a much longer way back than forward, and they'd have to make decompression stops along the way. They spent a bit of time trying to pass the body, which also added to their decompression time. In the end, three divers made it back to the surface. All had to be treated for decompression sickness, and one other diver never made it back. Authorities would also arrive at the scene, and they were like, we can't go retrieve the bodies. It's just too dangerous down there. And the three friends who had survived that dive, they decided they were gonna go down and get their friends back, and they did. They retrieved the bodies to give them a proper burial. Prostophobia, you know, darkness, uh, just too not great yeah. things. No. Starting off strong, we have Murphy's Cave, commonly referred to as Mark Twain Cave and the Lost Boys. Murphy's Cave, found in Hannibal, Missouri, was discovered between 1819 and 1820. The cave is three miles long with four separate entrances and 260 passages, along with a year-round temperature of 52 degrees Fahrenheit, 11 degrees Celsius, so pretty cold. 57 years ago, on May 9th of 1967, the a group of three by the names of Joey, Billy, and Craig set out to explore the extensive cave system after having their interest sparked by Joey's apparent sighting of an alien spaceship over a nearby cliff. And after being warned multiple times not to enter the cave due to the extreme dangers they might face if they did. But of course the warning was unheeded and the boys set off on their expedition. When they did not return home in the evening, the first reported instance of chaos began to ensue as we really have no way of knowing what other kind of chaos the boys experienced during their time underground. A search party was sent to explore the area, and unfortunately the trio was never found, but many eyewitnesses reported to have seen a mysterious figure over the very same cliff in which Joey claims to have seen the UFO. While the case was never closed, three theories for the boys' disappearance do exist. One, that they were lost to the caves. Two, that they had run away, however this theory is the least accepted given the positive state of the boys' home lives, and three, that they were abducted. Unfortunately, we really have no way of knowing, but I would recommend staying clear of this location and all of its dark twists and turns. Next, we have Mammoth Cave, which has been a hotbed for disappearances over the years, boasting an alarming 10 known cases of persons who went missing, one of which was Orla Allen K. Barrick. The woman was last seen around 2 p.m. on April 12th of 1996 and went missing that same night and was never seen again. Again. When police forced their way into her home, they found blood on the carpet and a burnt cigarette on the shelf. Barrick's hair was also later found in the Green River surrounding the cave, but no body was ever located. Next was Michael Leyland Vincent, who disappeared in March of 2011, an ex-convict who lived near the cave. In 2004, a 54-year-old man by the name of Roland Baldwin met a similar 
Caliphate after going for an ATV ride near the caves, after which he never returned. When a search group went out to the area in an attempt to locate the man, all they found was the ATV abandoned, along with Baldwin's glasses, shoes, and an unfinished bottle of whiskey. Tony Ray Chaot, Josephine Petit, Walter Greg Flower, Lost John, and three Jane Doe's were also reported to have gone missing in and around the cave. And how many others might have met the same fate? We really have no way of knowing. Next we have Kenny Veach, who was a hiker, YouTuber, and Area 51 enthusiast up until his final known days in 2014. The 47 year old, who was an experienced hiker, claimed to have found a cave near the assumed alien bunker Area 51. The cave, whose opening was shaped as a capital letter M, thus nicknamed simply the M Cave, would go on to garner extreme popularity and be the source of much speculation as well as a string of conspiracy theories. Veach first mentioned the cave in a comment under a YouTube video in 2014. He said that he had been hiking out by Niels Air Force Base next to Area 51 and found the hidden cave. And he also added that while he usually enters into every cave that he finds, he decided not to this time as when he stepped towards the entrance, he said his whole body began to vibrate. And the closer he got, the more severe the vibrations came. Despite his first encounter with the mysterious cave and after some encouragement from his followers, Beach did eventually decide to revisit it. But he and many others were left disappointed as he was unable to locate the Big M on his second expedition. On November 10th of 2014, Veach decided to try his luck again and headed out to try and find the cave once more, but unfortunately that was the last anyone ever heard from him as he did never return home from his final voyage. Speculation as to what could have happened to Kenny took off and ranged from Veach uncovering government secrets and alien forces all the way to being mauled by an animal or perhaps even faking his own death. However, one comment left on the missing YouTuber's page posted before his final expedition really stood out. The comment read, do not go back there. If you find the cave entrance, do not go in. You won't get out. Sand Cave, also known as Kentucky's Underground Enigma, is up next. The cave is no longer accessible due to safety concerns after a man by the name of Floyd Collins was trapped in its sandy maze for 18 days and was later found dead within its walls. Floyd, born July 20th of 1887, was an American cave explorer in the state of Kentucky. He lived to be just 37 years old after an accident occurred during an exploration in which Collins had hopes to discover a new entrance to the nearby Mammoth Cave, and of which he did not return. Floyd was a highly experienced explorer, so when he didn't make it back from his expedition, people naturally began to worry, and so a search team was sent out after him, of which only two were able to successfully reach the man. It appeared Floyd had become trapped by a rock that had fallen from the unstable sand and limestone walls of the cave, and many men spent many days attempting to come up with a solution for his rescue, during which Floyd's brother, Homer Collins, would slink down into the place his brother had been captured by the mountain's underground tunnels and provide him with food and water, all the while trying to remove the rubble that held him in his place. Unfortunately though, he was unsuccessful. On the 18th day, however, rescuers were able to finally reach Floyd, but the efforts proved to be futile as Collins had sadly passed due to exposure from the elements, and not only that, but the sand cave had sealed Floyd's body within his walls. So it was it wasn't until several months later that his body was able to be extracted and he was buried near his family's home. However, it seems he was eventually moved as his body now rests in the Mammoth Cave Baptist Church Cemetery as a tribute to his work in cave exploration. Cathedral Caverns, yet another culprit for a life-threatening disappearance on March 22nd of 2000 when a young man by the name of Justin Lovett disappeared inside the popular tourist attraction located in Langdale, England. The entrance to the cave is an impressive 126 feet wide and 25 feet high and makes way to a 0.75 mile long walking path. Inside the cave you will find a frozen waterfall and as you venture further, a giant forest of massive stalagmites protruding from the floors of the cavern. So while it is really no surprise that Lovett wanted to explore the cave, what was surprising was the fact that he didn't return home that night. Fearing the worst, his mother put together a search party to canvas the pitch black cave for any traces of her son Justin, who thing in the darkness. Thankfully, after just eight hours of having disappeared into the cave's vastness, Lovett was returned to his mother by a group of rescuers. He said the experience was a warning not to attempt something like this ever again without three sources of light and the accompaniment of another person. Next on the list, we have a vortex spring. 
Spring, an underwater cave system in the state of Florida, also the largest diving facility in the state. The site boasts multiple man-made caves as well as a cavern with depths of 115 feet 35 meters. Snorkeling in the area is open to the public, but to dive into the tunnel-like cave systems requires both dive and cave certifications, both of which Ben McDaniels had previously obtained before taking his last known dive on August 18th of 2010. McDaniels, age 30, born in Memphis, Tennessee, was working on becoming a dive instructor in the hopes of opening up his own dive business. On the day of his disappearance, he had successfully completed a morning dive at a depth of 58 feet, 17.6 meters, after which he refilled his tanks in a nearby dive shop. Around 7.30, he began to attempt his second dive of the day, of which he unfortunately never returned. Left behind was McDaniels' truck, wallet, driver's license, dive logs, and a map he had made of the Springs cave systems. The last known person he had spoken to was his mother in a phone call before his descent. For months after the disappearance, dive experts searched the area, except for an extremely dangerous area in the back of the cave system, and no body was ever recovered. The only trace of McDaniels found within the massive cave was two air tanks placed together near the underwater entrance, which seemed odd since generally tanks would be placed apart from one another as life-saving pit stops should a diver ever become low on oxygen when making their trip back up towards the surface. While Ben McDaniels is believed to have drowned within the cave, he is still classified as a missing person today. Okay, this next one is Barome Moore Cave. The cave was discovered in 1961 in Perry County in southeastern Missouri after a sinkhole revealed a natural underground tunnel system. When the cave was found, scientists discovered that it was home to several unique and uncommon species, including amphipods, cave salamanders, and grotto salamanders. Not only that, but footprints discovered in the still soft mud were determined to have been made from an extinct species of jaguar. On June 9th of 2022, a report was filed after a 13-year-old dog by the name of Abby went missing from a Missouri home located near the cave. It seems as though the animal had just vanished, as no trace of its presence could be detected anywhere in the area except for a few of her footprints near one of the cave's entrances. On August 6th of 2022, a recreational cave explorer by the name of Rick Haley visited the site in an attempt to map the cave, but he ended up with way more than he bargained for when he heard the sound of Abby's barks coming up through the walls of the cave. A rescue mission began that involved moving the dog through a 500 foot, 15 meter vertical climb through the tight walls of the cave. Now this one is a feel good story as the rescue was successful and Abby was returned home after having been missing for just over two months within the tight confines of the cave. How she survived, we have no clue, but we're really glad that she's okay. The Chinhoi Caves are up next. The beautiful caves located in A1, North Central Zimbabwe, which are made up of limestone and dolomite and contain a beautiful pool that goes 200 meters, 656 feet deep, were used as a hiding place during wartime in Africa. Not only that, but the caves are famously guarded by many spirits who are said to punish those who enter and do not comply with their specific set of rules for respecting both them and the cave. Some of these rules include explorers of the cave having to ask permission for entry, not being able to show panic or fear, nor being able to laugh while inside its cold walls, as well as not partaking in any mischief. The punishment for these offenses? One would disappear within the cave, never to be seen again. Again. It is also said that it's impossible to throw stones into the pool of the cave, which some claim to be never ending, as the spirits living there would stop the stone from ever hitting the surface of the water, thus no ripples exist within. Locals claim that there have been many disappearances over the years due to misbehavior on the ground, but no official reports have ever been filed. Next up we have the Wind Cave, discovered in 1881 by brothers Jess and Tom Bingham after they had heard loud whistling noises coming from a small hole in the ground, the cave's only original natural opening, which was later expanded upon to allow for exploration of the site. A vast underground cave system located in southwestern South Dakota, whose many chambers are lined with honeycomb-like calcite structures. The area became a popular destination for hikers, one of whom was named Rachel Cox. On October 22nd, of 1989, Cox, age 18, along with a group of others, was partaking in a mock search and rescue mission inside
inside the cave when Cox thought she had seen one of her instructors slip through a small passageway inside. She and her partner followed, but after realizing they had gone the wrong way, her partner slipped back through the hole from which he came. Cox waited, then decided to do the same, but suddenly her lamp went out. She stood in darkness, waiting for her partner to return, but after a few minutes, she decided she could just as easily feel her way back to the crevice and crawl out herself. Only she crawled through the wrong space and wound up even more lost than she had been just moments before. Over the course of her 36 hour disappearance, she became cold and desperate, cursing herself for being stupid enough to crawl into a crevice when her lamp was so low on fuel, and Cox even admitted that at one point she believed the cave had begun speaking to her. When she was finally rescued, she saw a bright light as a man with a big beard reached out his hand and asked, Rachel, are you ready to leave now? Rachel, exhausted, replied, are you God? And then waited another two hours as the team of rescuers pulled her shaking, dehydrated and weak from the cave back into the outside world. And finally we have Ellison's Cave, the 12th deepest cave in the United States. Along with many small crevices, the cave is home to an incredible 586 foot, 178.6 meter drop, nicknamed the Fantastic Pit. However, not so fantastic for some, as there have been multiple known cases of people who have rappelled down into its depths, only to have it be the last thing they ever did. This unfortunately was the tragic case for two University of Florida students by the name of Michael Peary and Grant Lockenbach. On February 12th of 2011, the pair had set out with a group of friends to explore the landmark, but apparently broke off from the pack at some point during the expedition. Dressed in shorts and a t-shirt, Grant was the first to attempt a 120 foot descent through an area in the cave containing a waterfall. But it seems somewhere along the way, his backpack became caught up in the rope he had been using to rappel down the cavern, and he became stuck. Michael, who was the more experienced climber of the two, and unaware of the fatal outcome, decided to go down after Grant in order to provide some assistance. It is said that the group was able to locate the two and even spoke to them for about 45 minutes until the voices of the two young men began to die out and eventually disappeared. The deceased were recovered and removed from the cave later that night, and while the cause of death was never officially declared, many believe that the two died of hypothermia due to extreme cold temperatures within the cave. The passing of Michael and Grant along with many others within the parameters of Ellison's cave serve as a warning of the extreme dangers of cave exploration. In fact, a few years later, a group of YouTubers went back to explore the cave where the teens were lost and ended up finding another group of people stuck in the rappel. They saved them, but imagine if they weren't there. And we're starting off this list with Kenny Veach. Kenny Veach was an experienced hiker and explorer who went missing in 2014 while searching for a peculiar cave in the Nevada desert. Kenny shared in a YouTube comment that he had encountered a mysterious M-shaped cave near the Nellis Air Force Base around Area 51, which had apparently caused his body to vibrate. Encouraged by other commenters, he filmed his exploration of the cave and uploaded it to his YouTube channel, Snakebite McGee, titling it, M cave hike. Unfortunately though, on his third attempt to reach the cave, a few months later, he vanished without a trace. His cell phone was discovered near the entrance of an old mine shaft, yet his whereabouts are still unknown. It's, it's possible he got lost or had an accident, but the cave's proximity to Area 51 and Kenny's claims of odd vibrations led to a lot of online rumors and theories. Some speculated he might have stumbled upon significant information related to extraterrestrials or government secrets, and that his pursuit was intentionally disrupted. Despite extensive searches though, there's still no solid evidence or leads as to where he is. Next, we have Ben McDaniel. Ben McDaniel disappeared in August of 2010 while exploring Vortex Spring in Florida. He dove down to explore an underwater cave, roughly 58 feet below the surface. He resurfaced. It was totally fine. He refilled his tanks in preparation for a second dive later in the evening. But this time, he never returned. His truck was left behind at a dive shop. Inside it were his wallet, a cell phone, and a map of the cave. There were also two oxygen tanks found near the entrance of the cave, and the two divers who discovered them found it odd that there was just 
air in the tanks rather than having a mix of gas, which is typically the case when deep diving. The cave is known for being uh, tricky to navigate with tight spaces and poor visibility and despite a thorough search by experienced divers, he was never found. Some think he might have run into problems, maybe he got stuck or had issues with his gear, but no one knows for sure. And some even suggest he purposely disappeared or maybe faked his own vanishing, which is quite the reach. But there's still no concrete answers till this day. Next on the list is Michael Leland Vincent. Vincent went missing in Mammoth Cave National Park in Kentucky on May 5th. 2011. At the time, he was on parole, and he had just set fire to his house, which he shared with his mother and aunt. Some speculated that he had attempted to burn down his house in order to fake his own death so that he could escape the consequences of his charges. Some say he may have taken his own life, but, but no body has ever been discovered. He lived very close to Mammoth Cave, though, which is huge. In fact, it's the largest known cave system in the world. So if he did go missing in that cave, it's likely he'll never be found. Next we have Peter Verhulsel. Peter was exploring the Sturkfontein Caves in South Africa with some friends in 1984. He had veered off the line, strung through the cave, which was used to help them find their way back out. Scuba divers were sent in to try and locate him, but days, then weeks went by before his body was finally discovered, at which point it was too late. Peter was unable to find his way back to his friends, but had managed to find a small underground beach where he pulled himself out of the water. It was pitch black in there and his oxygen tank was just about depleted so he was completely trapped. In this multi-week long search rescue teams would have been within 36 meters of him but Peter didn't hear them and the rescuers believed that he had drowned. When Peter was finally found six weeks after having gone missing, it was determined that he had died of starvation. Floyd Collins. Floyd Collins met his unfortunate fate in Crystal Cave in Kentucky, a cave which he had actually discovered and had been mapping out and exploring for eight whole years. On January 30th, 1925, while exploring the cave, Collins became trapped in a narrow passage about 150 feet away from the entrance. He had been working on creating an entrance to a grotto he had discovered down there when his gas lamp started to dim. Now, he was in a rush to make his way back out of the cave, and he accidentally knocked over his lamp, igniting it completely, or opposite of igniting it, he put it out completely, and his foot landed on an unstable part of the wall. Rocks started to shift, and one of them fell from the ceiling, pinning his leg. A rescue effort was, of course, launched, but Floyd was deep in the cave, and the difficult conditions made a rescue kind of tough to execute. Despite the attempts of rescuers, Collins remained trapped for over two weeks. Tragically, on February 13th, Collins finally died of exposure, hunger, possibly hypothermia. This was most likely the day he died, but his body wasn't actually retrieved until the 16th. Next up is the Nam Talu Cave Incident. In 2007, Helena Carroll and her fiance John Cullen were exploring Nam Tulu Cave in Thailand along with seven other tourists. Things took a turn for the worse though, when a flash flood broke out. This giant wave gushed into the cave and swept away everyone except for Helena and John who just started climbing in order to escape this rising water. They reached a ledge and debated what they were gonna do next. John ultimately decided he was going to attempt to swim to safety and send back help. He did not survive, and Carol was found and rescued hours later. She was the only survivor. Number four, we have what I like to call a close call. This was a story posted to Reddit by a now deleted user, but the story goes that they were exploring a cave with their family. As they were making their way out, they discovered a narrow opening in the rock about knee high. By lying on their stomachs and squeezing through the tight space, they entered a small crawl space within the rock. The ceiling of this space was adorned with beautiful quartz crystals. Moving in one by one, the group stared up at this beautiful sight before them. The space was so tight though, that they could feel the ceiling against their backs and the floor against their stomachs with each breath. They continued deeper though until the path led to an area covered in sediment formations like stalagmites and stalactites. Everyone thought this was pretty cool, but they began to feel water trickling onto their backs. They realized that it was raining outside and the crawl space had a downward slope that would quickly fill with rainwater. The only way to escape was 
way back they'd come in. And what started as a small trickle of water pretty quickly grew into streams and the water began to accumulate. They rushed to exit, crawling out one by one, but the water was flooding in faster than they could escape. And the user who was furthest from the exit was trying very hard not to panic. They had the worst time here, crawling on their stomach with sharp crystals hanging from the ceiling again. And they struggled to keep up. The water level rose rapidly, splashing against them as they crawled. And just in time though, they managed to crawl out as the water had reached their lips at this point and everyone managed to get out safely. Ugh, I feel uncomfortable just reading that. Number three, we have the catacombs video. Now, while the Paris catacombs isn't technically a cave, it is cavernous and dark and incredibly easy to get lost in. This is one of the most infamous pieces of found footage on the internet, as we still don't know who this person was. If you somehow have not heard about this case before, it's a POV video of a person exploring the catacombs. The camera with the footage was found later on by a group of explorers. Most of the video is pretty mundane until you start to notice that the person behind the camera seems to be getting increasingly more distressed. He starts to pick up his pace, pointing the camera around in a frantic manner as if realizing he's lost and is starting to panic. Then he's in a full on run. The video ends with the cameraman finally dropping the camera and just running deeper into the shadowy depths of the maze of catacombs as the camera continues to film before finally running out of battery. John Edward Jones. In 2009, John Edward Jones went missing in Nutty Putty Cave, Utah. John was exploring the cave with his brother when he got stuck upside down in an uncharted narrow passage which he had mistaken for a section called the Birth Canal Passageway. Despite efforts to free him, John remained trapped in the tight space. Rescuers worked tirelessly to try and retrieve him, but in the end, they were unable to save his life. The challenging conditions of the cave made it extremely difficult. The passage was only about 10 inches wide in some places, and it was positioned at a steep angle. The rescue operation involved uh, pulleys, ropes, and other equipment to try and free John. They even brought in specialized teams from around the country to help, but unfortunately, after nearly 28 hours of being trapped in this upside down, compressed position, John suffered cardiac arrest. Because of the dangerous conditions and the risk to the rescuers, it was decided the best course of action was to just close off the entrance to the cave, sealing it with concrete to prevent further access. And finally, we have the rescue. I thought I'd finish off the video with an uplifting story for once. Let's leave uh, things on a good note. Uploaded in 2016 to the YouTube channel Exploring with Josh, the group of friends were exploring Ape Cave in Mount St. Helens, Oregon, when they made a pretty shocking discovery. At the start of the trek, the cave is very spacious, but pretty soon the group were on their hands and knees as they had moved further and further into the cave. It was becoming increasingly more low and narrow, and one of the guys suggested they just turn back, saying, I don't think this is worth it, man. I don't think we're meant to crawl this far, but they continued on, and it's lucky that they did because they came across a young girl who had got lost in the cave somehow. She didn't have anything on her, no light, nothing, but she'd managed to crawl in that far. The boys were able to bring her back to safety where she was reunited with her parents. Luckily, she hadn't been in there very long. If they hadn't decided to explore the cave that day, who knows if she ever would have been found. Number 10, the Nutty Putty Cave. That sounds friendly, but this is not a good story. You would think that when you hear the words rescue arrive, that you'd be able to heave a sigh of relief. But in the case of John Jones in 2009, sadly, that wasn't the case. John Jones and his family loved exploring caves together and decided to do so again on November 24th, 2009 as a way to connect before Thanksgiving. John went off to find the birth canal, a narrow passageway that explorers had to infamously shimmy through with their body. He entered what he thought was the canal but soon got stuck. He was with nine other friends and family members. His brother Josh tried to pull him out, but instead John fell even further, pinning his arms. He was now trapped 400 feet into the cave, 100 feet below the earth's surface. Rescuers tried everything. They tried everything, but their only hope was a pulley system which eventually failed. After 27 hours, John passed out due to the strain on his heart because he was at a really weird angle. And at just as 26 years old with a one year old daughter, John passed away. Number eight, the Sturkfontein Caves. This event is a reminder that if you are going to take risks, 
always follow the plan. Otherwise, it may cost you your life. Peter Verhusel decided to explore the Sterkfontein Caves in South Africa in 1984 with a few of his friends. Despite guidelines, Peter couldn't resist exploring caves off the beaten path. The first couple of times it was alright, but the third time his friends couldn't find him. Peter had gone so far down a passage off the planned path that he eventually got lost with not enough air to return. So if you do that and you don't pack enough air, then you're screwed. Fortunately, Peter found a small island with a cave which meant that he wouldn't drown, but given that he was short on air, he couldn't return, meaning he had to wait for rescue. With no food, Peter was trapped in the pitch black darkness. I wish I could say this story had a happy ending, but it took six weeks for rescue to find him. Beside his body was a note he left for his wife and mother in the sand, I love you, Cheryl and Ma. If you're gonna do that, make sure you pack extra oxygen. Oh my god. Anyways, my dad's a scuba diver. This freaks me out, okay? Number seven, Dion Dreher. In 1994, a man named Dion Dreher was lost 270 meters in Bushman's Hole in South Africa, and for 10 years, no one was able to get to him. But Dave Shaw, an experienced diver, was determined to do just that retrieve his body so that he could be put to rest by his family. Shaw had set a number of diving records and was the only one to find Dreher's body. 207 meters down, covered in silt. Unable to retrieve it the first time, he promised to return. It was Shaw's 333rd dive in his life when he went back, but at those depths, any intense struggle could lead to a diver passing out. If a diver starts to inhale too quickly, something called hypercapnia can happen, which is when too much carbon dioxide fills the bloodstream and it can disorient you, you don't know which way is up anymore. While Dave was trying to cover the body with a body bag, the skeleton began to float, something he didn't account for. Catching it became a vicious struggle and being an experienced diver, he knew better than to keep trying. But as he began his ascent, to try again later, his light got snagged on the cave line. He was already disoriented from the earlier exertion and began to panic, and Dave eventually passed out and died next to Dreher. But later, their bodies floated to the surface, making it possible for divers to retrieve them both. So in a way, he did make good on his word. But even as an experienced diver, things still went wrong. So prepare yourself. Always. Number four, the Plura Caves. So by now, right, we know that splunking in caves in general can be terrifying, but add scuba gear and it's a whole other level of craziness. A group of experienced divers decided to enter Norway's Plura Cave in February 2014, and they would be some of the last to do so. The pond that led to the cave had frozen, so they cut a hole in the ice before diving in. The plan was to swim to the other side, but one of the scuba divers named Jari had gotten halfway before he gotten stuck in a narrow passage. He panicked, and in order to prevent hypercapnia, his friend Patrick handed him a cylinder to limit the carbon dioxide in his system. To his horror, as he tried to switch, Jari helplessly swallowed water and died. Patrick had to stay calm, otherwise the same fate would meet him and therefore had to abandon his friend's body and keep going. Another man named Kai was behind him with another man named Jari, who also ran into some trouble. Jari, upon seeing the body, panicked and sadly fell to the same fate despite Kai coming to his aid. As Kai was the last diver, the exit was now blocked and he had to trek back the way he came. He emerged 11 11 hours later, and it wasn't until two months later that the bodies could be retrieved secretly by the same men who left them because they closed the Plura Cave. The Plura Cave is now closed to even the most experienced divers. No one is allowed. All right, guys, we are coming up to our top three, and if you like this video and want to see more like it, you know what to do. Press that button. Tell us you like us. Subscribe for more. It makes us happy, and then we like making you happy. So. Number three, the Cave Creek disaster. In 1995, 17 students were visiting New Zealand's Cave Creek and everything was supposed to be fine. They had a guide. The weather was fine. They weren't exploring narrow crevices underwater. The path was designed for tourists like them. But then, a couple of students noticed a flimsy looking platform. As teenagers are wanted to do, they made fun of it, assuming that it was stronger than it looked, so they jumped on it. But the builders had made a deadly mistake. They had used nails instead of bolts to secure it in place and had no engineering background. The platform gave way and the students plummeted 130 feet onto rocks. One survived by gripping a handrail all the way down, but out of the 17, only four survived. Number two, Paninkin Plains Cave. Mixing in some happier endings in our top 10 list, we have the story of Andrew White and his team. In 1988, Andrew was with a team of 15 people excited to explore one of the deepest caves in the world. 
world. A rare cyclonic storm had other plans for the group when it caused the middle section of the entire cave to collapse. They were trapped underground and couldn't go back the way they came. They hung tightly next to a small ledge and the roof above them looked as though it was about to collapse. Andrew took on the courageous task of swimming through the water to find a way out. It took the team over 24 hours to be let out and thankfully they all survived! Yeah, like the first story we have where they all survived. Luckily, Andrew recorded the whole thing and ended up releasing an award winning documentary called Nullabore Dreaming. Despite surviving this experience, though, Andrew passed away in a helicopter crash in 2012 in New South Wales. And at number 10, we have The Devil's Hole. I mean, the name speaks for itself. It's as easy to stay away from a cave with a name like this. This place has a distinction of being known as the most haunted place in western New York. And it's for a good reason. According to the native folklore, the Iroquois said that a demonic serpent named Evil One lived lived inside of the cave. People who would go inside of it will either never come out again or they will come out with their hair turned white. But things get worse as we go back in time to the Devil's Hole Massacre of 1763. A group of warriors used the Devil's Hole to attack soldiers. It was a complete bloodbath and 81 British soldiers were killed and their bodies were thrown into the cave to rot and decompose. The Hellfire Caves takes us to number 9. So if you're not into claustrophobia, labyrinths, or dangerous places, then you're going to want to stay far away from the Hellfire Caves. A team of paranormal investigators traveled through the long winding tunnels in an attempt to conjure up spirits. This cave is home to catacombs that lie about 300 feet below the surface. The old Hellfire Club used to hold meetings that consist of pagan worship and human sacrifices. Supposedly there are a ton of evil ghosts that linger within these caves, but if that doesn't scare you, it's for sure scaring me, maybe a half a mile of tunnels underground will do the trick. Because you never know, maybe you'll get lost and you'll never see the surface ever again. Gomentong Cave in Malaysia brings us to number 8. This next cave seems like it came straight out of a horror movie. The Gomentong Cave is the home to millions of bats. And if that doesn't freak you out, maybe the millions of cockroaches that feast on anything alive will do the trick. Animals that accidentally fall into this scary cave will be quickly devoured by these cockroaches. Okay, and then we have the cherry on top. This place also has enormous cockroach eating centipedes that scurry along the cave walls. So don't ever go inside of this cave without wearing one of those sealed up bodysuits, or better yet, don't ever venture inside of it at all. Number seven takes us to Noval Cave in Romania. This place is also known as the Poison Caves because it is rich in hydrogen, sulfide, and carbon dioxide, but low in oxygen. But despite this, creatures are living in the cave and they have been separated from the outside world for the past 5.5 million years. Inside of this dark cave, there are spiders, scorpions, wood lice, and centipedes crawling along the walls, and many of them haven't even been seen by humans. So who knows what else is lurking inside the shadows? The Cave of Sybil descends onto our list at number 6. There are some pretty creepy natural formations around the world where people think that these are entrances or even gateways into hell. One of the oldest known entrances to the underworld is this cave right here. Apparently it is so sinister and fueled by negative energy that birds won't even fly over it. They know better. According to the legend, the dead priestess Sybil guards this gateway and lures travelers into the fiery pit of hell. Well, you know what? I'm not willing to see if this legend is true or not. So you know what? I'm just going to keep my distance away from this one. Moving into number four, let's talk about the caves of death in Scotland. Judging by the name, it says it all. Well, you wouldn't catch me going anywhere near this place, but for people who are brave enough to go on a death expedition, I mean a cave exploration, these remote caves can be found in northern Scotland. But be warned, archaeologists who already have explored these caves, well they have found some pretty horrifying things. Human sacrifices used to be conducted there and there are even children's heads posted on poles. There are thousands of dead bodies inside and people believe that this cave could have been used for some pretty intense supernatural rituals. Like I said before, I'm staying away from all the caves on this list, especially this one. The Moaning Cavern is up next at number 
number three. This dark cave got its name, well, because you can hear a creepy moaning sound coming from inside of the cavern. This happens because the soul of the dead are screaming out in agonizing pain. Okay, not really, but the moans are from when the air circulates deep within the cave. But the sound is still pretty unsettling. If a scary moaning doesn't keep you away, maybe this will. Well, there are over 100 prehistoric bodies lurking at the bottom of the cave, and no one knows what they're doing there. Once you repel 165 feet into the cave, you will have to exit through an iron staircase, and you're gonna wanna watch your step because it's a long way down if you fall. Killing Cave takes our number two spot on this list. Okay, who the heck are naming these caves? Killing Cave? Well, if you ever visit Cambodia, you can go visit the Killing Caves for yourself for some reason. Well, not that you would really want to. I mean, is this really a big tourist attraction? Well, it might be because in the 70s, these caves used to be a place to torture and murder people, so there is history behind it. Well, the bones of the victims can still be found inside. Some of the skeletons have been crammed into display cases, and there are chicken wire cages that are filled up high with human skulls. Torture devices and victims' clothing are still scattered along the floor, and many other people were murdered there when they were pushed into the cave from the skylight above. So I'm thinking that a place with this much dark history can't be good for the soul. There is definitely an evil presence there, and it's also a pretty morbid place if you ask me. And just like that, topping our list, and at number one, we have the Bell Witch Cave. This property and cave was once owned by John Bell, and it's believed that the Bell Witch torments the Bell family until they mysteriously died. The family used to see strange animals around their property, and late at night, they would hear strange noises such as gnawing, choking, and dragging sounds. Violent attacks by unknown forces started happening to the family. The youngest daughter would wake up covered in scratches, and she'd be covered in bruises as well. Apparently, the Bell Witch lived inside of the caves, and anyone who stepped foot on the property Property will be paid a nasty visit by her. At number 10, we have the Eagle's Nest Cave. The Eagle's Cave Nest is an underwater cave located in Fort Lauderdale in West Florida. It is made up of giant passageways that have taken tens of thousands of years to form. The cave has been compared to Mount Everest for divers because it's so, so beautiful but so, so deadly. It seems that before divers enter the cave, there is an underwater sign with the Grim Reaper on it, which isn't a good sign. The sign reads, there is nothing in this cave worth dying for. Do not go beyond this point, which seems pretty damn scary, right? But a lot of people have not heeded the sign's advice. Divers still risk it. There have been at least 11 deaths in the cave since 1981. In 2016, the missing bodies of a father and son were found after three years. The pair were experienced divers who went out on Christmas night and ran into trouble. A 20 year old diver also lost his life in the cave in 2018. Diver Sylvester Muller called the cave a Venus flytrap, which does seem like an accurate description. From a cave compared to Everest to a cave on Everest itself. Coming in at number 9, we have Green Boots Cave. Green Boots Cave is a cave near the summit of Mount Everest, named after an unidentified climber who died near a crevice. Death is no stranger to Mount Everest, the tallest mountain in the world. 300 people have tried dying to summit or on their way down from the top of the tallest mountain. Some estimate that climbers have a 1 in 10 chance of dying on their way back down, which I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't like those odds. So back to Green Boots, a dead male climber only identifiable by his bright green hiking boots. The trouble is, is that it's actually just too hard to recover a corpse from the top of Everest. Often they're just left there and they become kind of morbid landmarks, which is exactly what Green Boots became. He was lying on his right side with his face towards the mountain and he was very visible between 2001 and 2014. He disappeared for a few years, but he returned in 2017. It's thought that stones were covering from a bit. In 2006, a British climber, David Sharp, also dived in Green Boots Cave. Sharp summited too late in the day and took shelter in the cave where he died along Alongside the mystery corpse. Awful. Coming into number 8, we have Gaping Gill. Okay, I am thrilled to be talking about this one because it's located in my favourite place in the entire world, the Yorkshire Dales. If I had to die one day, then I guess in the mouth of Gaping Gill swallowing me whole would probably be my preferred way. Gaping Gill is a natural cave in North Yorkshire, England. Now, the Yorkshire Dales has actually had the most cave deaths in the United Kingdom. Gill and her gaping mouth have had rather a lot to do with that. Gaping Gill is said to be big enough to fit an entire cathedral in. It's 100 metres deep and there is water at the bottom. 
bottom, which means many people who have fallen through Gil's mouth have died. Okay, so let's take things back to ancient times for this one, shall we? A time where immurement in caves was a way to off your enemies. Savage. Coming into number seven, we have the tale of the seven sleepers. This is a popular legend about the persecution of Christians in the Roman times. It seems that the Roman Emperor Decius, who ruled in circa 250 AD, gave seven young men the chance to recant their faith or die. It seems that the holy men decided to leave the Roman Empire and live in a cave. They gave up their worldly goods and started a new life in a cave where they thought that they could pray in peace. They were wrong. It seems that the Emperor found them and ordered the cave to be sealed, killing them as punishment for their so called crimes. They never got out. The story appears in multiple fables, and a similar tale is evident in the Quran. The location of the cave is said to be in Amman in Jordan, which is now a tourist location, but a lot of other places also claim to be home of the cave. The next cave was the inspiration behind the 2016 movie The Last Descent. At number five, we have the Stone of Pigs. Underground caves on volcanic islands or near volcanoes in general are a bad idea. Why? Well, there's a much, much more increased chance of gas. Poisonous gas. In 2007, a group of 30 scientists and nature lovers went to Piedra de los Cochinos Cave, which translates to the Stone of Pigs. I probably butchered the pronunciation and I'm sorry. The group were a mile down underground when natural gases, including carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide, started seeping in through the cave walls. It seems that several in the group started passing out one by one, but luckily, one scientist managed to find a way out and raise the alarm. A further 14 people were able to get out in various states of sickness. Eight people were rescued alive. But sadly, six people died after being trapped 2,000 meters underground. We have another tragic tale of gas in a cave. We have Bucci Cave at number four. The Bucci Cave in northern France, in the port of Rouen, was used in the war by Nazis in order to conceal V1 flying bombs. In June 1995, seven teenagers hiked to the cave and they lit a fire. It seems that the fire burned up the oxygen and added to a higher concentration of carbon monoxide, which meant that the teens died of asphyxiation. The boys were between the ages of 13 and 14, and not one of them returned from the cave alive, which is truly tragic. The search was sparked when two of the boys, brothers Nicholas and Thomas, didn't return home and their panicked father raised the alarm. The search sparked even more tragedy as the fire captain and a villager were overcome by the fumes in the tunnels as they searched for the boys and they died too. Three other members of the fire department were taken ill, as was the searching father and three other members of the rescue team. How truly, truly tragic. Coming into number three, we have the Oldley Edge Mines. The Oldley Edge Mines are found in the Peak District near the east of Cheshire in England. It is thought that the mines date back to the Bronze Age, where ancient humans would mine for copper. The caves are vast, but one in particular has proved very deadly. The mines were in constant use between the 1600s to 1877 after yet another nasty accident. After the caves closed as working mines, they were explored by adventurers, but actually, it seems that they were just as deadly. Scores of people died or were hurt as they descended into the dark depths of the cave. Famously, in 1929, the bodies of two men were found a month after they'd lost their way in the tunnels. It's said that they still haunt the space today, which is now only accessible by caving clubs, although that hasn't stopped some people exploring the area. Interestingly, though, the town of Audley is also associated with a legend of King Arthur and Merlin. It's said that Merlin watches over the town and that one day he will rise when the country is in great need and desperate for a savior. Okay, this is the saddest story that you'll hear today, and I guess things actually do kind of get a little bit worse at the end of the story. Coming into number two, we have the Okinawa Caves. In Japan, there is a cave dubbed the Suicide Cave in Okinawa's Totemon Village. During World War II, locals would hide in the caves to shelter from bombs and merciless American troops. During the Battle of Okinawa, women, children, and the elderly were hidden in the caves to protect them from US forces. Sadly, though, as they lost the battle, the Japanese army instructed the rest refugees hidden in the caves to kill themselves. 83 of the 140 people hiding in the cave committed suicide, among them were 47 children who were killed by their own parents or grandparents. Today the cave is a memorial for those who died, and the Japanese do take their memorials very seriously out of respect, but also out of fear of ghosts. In September 2017, the cave was vandalized, which is utterly awful. Okay, finally we have a sad story, but there is a ray of light in it. But still, it's pretty 
pretty tragic. Coming into number one, we have the Tham Lang Cave. A lot of you will have heard of the Tham Luang Cave. It's the cave where the 12 Thai boys were heroically rescued after they got stuck in June 2018 for 18 days. 12 boys aged between 11 and 16 were all part of the Mupao Wild Boys football team. They went into a cave with loads of snacks and a football and were planning to celebrate a birthday. Celebration turned to tragedy though when an unexpected torrential downpour flooded the cave and trapped the boys inside. They were forced to squeeze into an elevated rock four kilometers deep within the cave. Their coach went in to look for them, but also got trapped. It looked like they weren't going to make it out alive. A team went in to rescue them, and when I say team, it seems that actually 10,000 people were involved in their rescue. Sadly, a Thai Navy SEAL died of asphyxiation after delivering supplies of air, but running out of oxygen himself. He was a hero. His efforts weren't in vain, as the boys were eventually rescued. Interestingly, though, there is an enduring legend tied up with the cave about a couple whose spirits are trapped there forever. In Thailand, there's a goddess by the name of Zhao Mei Nang, which translates as the reclining princess. She is the spirit that is said to inhabit the cave and the mountainside. Legend has it that once upon a time, a beautiful princess fell in love with a stable boy, and knowing that their love was forbidden, they ran away together. When they heard her father and his army were searching for them, they hid inside the caves. Sadly, though, the boy was caught and killed when he went out to find food. When the princess found out about her lover's death, she stabbed herself and bled out in the cave, which is where they say her blood now flows as water. Cheery. Locals began thinking that the boys had been trapped at the whim of the princess spirit. While the change in weather may have come as a result of the unamused princess, it does seem that she may have helped in their rescue too. Amid the bid to free them, locals began pleading with a statue of the reclining princess outside the cave, leaving her offerings to appease her. Again, like I said, Good, the boys were rescued, but super, super sad that one of the rescuers had to die. Next up on number six now, we have the Chislehurst Caves. This vast complex in England contains some 22 miles of passageway split into three distinct sections named Saxon, Druid, and Roman. They later join up through other connecting passages. People have mined the caves there for thousands of years, but the earliest written record comes from around 1250. In more modern times, the mines were home to people escaping the bombing of London during the Second World War. The history, turmoil, and darkness of these stony hallways seems to have intertwined and left a very dark energy behind. People regularly report hearing screams, murmurs, children giggling, and footsteps echoing from deep within the labyrinth. Locals say it's the ghosts of those who died there and want to let the living know of their eternal horror. Coming in number four now, we have Robber's Cave. This one is located in Nebraska and has long been known as a sacred meeting spot for the Pawnee Indians. The cave system lies directly below an area where the tribe used to carry out traditional practices such as healing, animal spirit powers, and medicinal work. Some say the deep connection they made with the earth there has had a lasting impact on the land. Long after the area was abandoned, locals claim they still hear the sounds of beating drums and chanting as if the rituals are being performed formed by the ghosts there. They also say that from the outside, you can hear screams and moans coming from the caves. Next up at number two now, we have the Washaba Street Caves. This one is quite unique in a number of ways. Firstly, it looks like a normal building from the outside, located in St. Paul, Minnesota. It was built into sandstone caves along the Mississippi River so that locals could mine silica. Over the years though, it was overrun by gangsters who used the caves as a base of operations. According to legend, these gangsters were gunned down in the caves in the early 1930s. The brutality of their deaths left restless spirits behind in the caves. The ghostly sightings of them have continued to this day. Some even say the ghosts have begun to wander out of the caves and into the cafe next door, giving people the fright of their lives. Staff and customers have reported seeing the apparitions of a woman sitting at the bar with a man in a Panama hat. Many people would want to avoid seeing such a sight, but if you do, they have a cave tour there for just $8. Not bad. 